Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Perpetua Dwile. It's good to have you here. Thank you for stopping by. If you've seen my video for the first time, like you're meeting me for the first time, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos, which drops weekly. So click the red subscribe button and also click that bell sign beside it so that you are always notified whenever I drop a video. So yeah, we landed uh, Canada this year, 2023, my family and I. If you missed my last video where I shared my gist moving from Joss to Abuja, just click the link um, and I'm going to leave the link below so that you can catch up on that video and see some beautiful sights in Nigeria and hear my gist how we moved from Joss to Abuja. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my landing gist from Abuja to Canada. Amazing experience, I must tell you. And I can't wait to share it all with you. So hang in there. Stay tuned. So we arrived Abuja two days before our trip to give us time to do other things. We needed to get... Uh, some more malaria drugs uh, back in Joss the batch of malaria drug they had will be expiring March this year So we wanted something that had a longer expiry date. We decided that okay, we'll get that in Abuja So we went two days before our trip so that we can get these things that we couldn't get in Joss and also see family members in Abuja So on Friday the 27th we arrived in Namdi Azikiwe Airport the international wing first shocker a family of four, each of us had um, two, two bags, checking bags, and then we had our one, one hand luggage. Um, first shocker was that we arrived and there were no trolleys to pack our things. We were favored and a guy came from nowhere. Obviously, he is their leader and instructed two of the guys to go get trolleys and take care of our things. <laughs> well, it's just God. So they came. Uh, knowing that we're going to need cash in the airport, my husband went to queue up at the ATM and then I was with the trolley guys and the children. So we loaded our things into the trolley and then we moved to where we're supposed to enter and begin the process and all. So the first point of um, contact for us were the uh, immigration guys. When we approached them, uh, the first immigration man called my attention and said, Madam, are you alone? You and the children? Where's your husband? I said, oh, he's at the ATM trying to make withdrawal. I guess that sounded like money coming. And immediately said, oh, then don't worry. Just go. Go ahead. Go ahead with your things. When your husband comes, we'll talk with him. So they went ahead to scan my bags already. <laughs> My husband and I, we are, we are deep into reading. We love to research on things. We love to read on things. So we made sure we went through all the instructions, the airline instructions on what to carry and what not to carry. So we made sure we did not carry anything that will make people want to start asking us for money or something that they will come and seize. Like we took our time all the way from Joss. I kept weighing all the eight bags. I had my scale, so I was weighing. Even when we got to Abuja, I was weighing everything. And already before we got to the airport, we had already decided that we were going to pay for an extra luggage, right? So they scanned everything. The guy did not see anything. He was now like, ah, toh, uh, this one way don't deliver us so anything for us. The other immigration guy now told him, ah, no worry, leave her. Say the husband, the ATM. We go talk with them when he come. Hmm. I said, to this is for money matter don't start to. So when we were done with immigration, um, our Greek people, I didn't know the next table beside them were our Greek people. I thought we were going to meet our Greek people elsewhere because they were almost wearing the same uniform, right? And those ones just sat down. They didn't tell me anything. So the guys who were helping me, another back set of guys came to help with the trolley. There are there were two, three trolleys. So these guys were really helpful. They helped to pack my things into the trolley. And just before we were able, we wanted, just as we were moving, uh, one of the ladies on the other table close to immigration called me. Say, ah, madam, agri, you never see us. <laughs> I checked the babe with the vibe. Okay, so I said, oh, sorry, that I didn't know. I thought we were going to meet a Greek elsewhere. So she, uh, we're about to start unpacking from the trolley when she said, okay, no, don't worry, you, madam, come. I came. 
So she was like, um, you know, we're supposed to check you, right? And it will mean you unpacking all those things. And then you see you and the children. It will mean more money for this guy. So what do you have for us? Of course, I knew um, where that was headed. So I, I was prepared. I told myself that the goal is I want to get leave Nigeria to Canada with all the calm in me, right? So I was ready to just give her whatever it was. So she said she doesn't want to stress me to unpack those things, uh, that, but I will need to drop something. So she didn't check my bags. I said, drop something. How do you mean drop something? What, how, what do you, how much do you need? She said, I have to send 10,000 naira. I didn't argue. I don't get power for that one. So I was like, well, I don't have cash. She said, I can transfer. I did the transfer. Yeah. And I said, if this is my going to be, if this is what to change her life, let her have it. So I transferred the money to her and those guys took us to the check-in site. Um, we were there when my husband finally got in. Guess what? All the time he spent at the ATM, there was no money. So apparently the issues, the lack of more cash issues in Nigeria had started on the day we were leaving. We didn't know because every effort to get cash to spend in the airport proved abortive. But at the end of the day, it was a blessing to us because we were now easy. It was easy to tell all those officials, there's no cash, there's no cash. And that they would just let us pass. So when we got there, the lady weighed all our bags. Everything was on point. She was impressed, like, ah, ah, eight bags. I think it was only one bag that was a little above 23 kg. And I knew. So, you know, recall, I told you we had prepared to pay for an extra luggage. So um, when she weighed it and noticed that it was about 24, 25, I told her, yes, I know that we have an extra bag here we want to pay for. So I had to reduce things into that. So, well, we, we paid for the extra um, luggage. That one, paying for that was also a problem because they sent us to the ATM site in the airport to get the money. It was still a challenge getting money to pay for the extra bag. It took a while. Finally, we were able to do that. So after going through the checking um, process, they checked our bags, everything was wrapped and checked in. Our passports, we asked for our passports. We gave it to them to look through. They stuck the, all the, the papers for our luggages were stuck to my own passport. They never asked us for our yellow card, even though we had to go do that because of the trip. They never asked for that. They never asked for our COVID-19 card. The guy was just like, ha, PR. Do you know what you are holding? This one that you are holding, that means you are running out of this country and leaving us. You have to bless us. Oh, yeah, or anything for the boys. Well, we didn't have cash, remember? So we told them there's no cash. I have not been able to make any withdrawal. He now said, okay, I think my husband had like 1,000 naira on him or so. So he just gave it to the guy. So from there, we went to, um, we filled one form. It's like they call it a yellow form or so. I can't recall right now. We filled all our details. The team was plenty, Sha. We did all the fillings. Then they took a passport photo, each of us. Uh, after that, we now went to another level of scanning again, where they were to scan our hand luggage. Ha! At this point, it was at that point that I recalled that there's this pack of wine cups that I got, we got as wedding gifts. I love those cups. I love the design. I've kept those cups with me. And when we're going to move to Canada, I said I must go with these cups because I love them. So when I was trying to reduce um, things from my um, check-in bags, I forgot that I moved that wine, the wine cups to the hand luggage and glass they don't allow glass right when you are boarding so i forgot completely and when the woman was scanning she now say ah oh! she saw glass cups and was like ah this will not go through i should go and check it in i carried it i had to go through the stress of going back to check in to ask them that come i forgot i want to check this in is it possible they said no that my things our luggages have already been moved I cannot check this in. Ha, huh, God, what do I do? So there and then I knew that these people are going to go with these cops. I just knew immediately that these cops are not going to go with me. So I went back to the place where she was scanning and I just gave it to her. 
before you know it, she and another staff were already fighting on it. The other staff was like, ah, but she was the one that she was being good to me. Why didn't I dash her the cup? And I'm told that there are six wine cups in that set. The two of you can share three, three, right? She said, this other one will not give her that. She knows this woman. She won't give her. Well, that's not my headache. Whatever you guys want to do with the cups, do with it. So um, from there, we moved to the departure lounge where we now had to go wait for our boarding time our flight was to be for 3 15 but like i told you we got there a little before 11 and the check-in was smooth like we were there on time there was no queue so it was just smooth and we finished everything on time so i think by before one we were done with all our checking all the feeling and everything so we had some time to stay in the lounge so we just took our time. I was I went strolling with the kids so that they can look around and all that. They sure had fun, right? So when it was time to, before boarding time, um, Hobby and I were now talking. We we're like, okay, we don't know the kind of food they will serve us on air. And I'm a picky eater. Like if you don't pass rice, pounded yam, those things, it's hard for me to eat some of these things with creams and all that. So um, he went to get us food. And the lady in the restaurant there, in the departure lounge, said their own service is special, that usually they allow um, passengers take food from their restaurant into the flight. Ashena wash, right? So we bought, and because she said that, we said, okay, let us keep the food and have it on board once we board. So when it was time to board and we we're going with our food, the staff were like, where are you guys going to? Qatar staff, where are you taking this to? We said we bought this, like 15K. <laughs> 15K to buy those food. We said we bought these things and um, we were told that we could actually take it, uh, board with it so that we can eat while flying. And they said, nope, they don't allow food or more. One of the staff now said, okay, he took us to one corner. He said, oh yeah, you guys eat it fast. I don't know how to eat fast, right? So what I did was I just uh, packaged the plantain. I love plantain a lot. So I packaged the plantain and threw into my bag. So my husband tried to eat the meat and then I tried to feed the kids with the rice fast enough. So we did that and we left the rest, the remaining food for the staff. And then we went in. The moment we entered the aircraft, I was like, whoa. You could see the children. My children immediately they lit up you could see how excited they were i was excited too because we booked this flight uh is it four months or so before the time okay three months let's say about four three months before our flight time was when we booked this flight with qatar air and we kept following up with their customer service to let them know we are traveling with children and we want the best comforts and all that Qatar Air, your services are amazing. Like, I, it was a good one. Like, the flight was comfortable. The leg space was good, you know. It was, it was a nice one, though. So, my kids, <laughs> look at them, enjoying themselves. Like, they, each person had their own uh, screen to themselves. Uh, you know, children, when they can have screen that they can control on their own, it's another level of excitement for them. See them so happy. <laughs> I went like I I was just looking at them and my heart you know was just bubbling with joy like okay we're going to enjoy this flight it's not going to be that strenuous you know I've flown um within Nigeria severally and I know what flights can be like so I was praying that this kind of flight that was six hours flight I was praying that it should be this comfortable so yeah it's comfortable. Uh, Qatar Air will give each passenger a package. As you are boarding, you are getting a package. In your package, you are going to see um, um, a blanket. There's a blanket in your package. There's eye shield for if you want to sleep. There's the ear plug. There is socks because it can be really cold, right? There's socks. There's just a whole lot in your package. Then there's the headset for each person. So they, they, Qatar Air made it a very sweet flight for us. It was a beautiful one. So it took us six hours from Qatar, uh, from Abuja to Doha Airport in Qatar. When we arrived Doha, uh, I, I noted some points down so that I don't forget. So you are going to be seeing me um, looking at my write-up, my points, so that I don't forget. When we arrived Doha Airport, guys... 
Doha Airport. I'm not talking about the, I mean the airport alone is a city. Inside the airport, train is working within the airport. Like we entered the airport in the dead of the night. It was in the night. It was like we arrived at their peak time because the place was like a market. It, it was like a big, it, it is a big city. You see, um, people were just, people were active <laughs> at the point. We had to just, and people were speaking language here and there, you know. this. <laughs> we, we just had to put ourselves somewhere like this. Like, it's not like there's any uh, empty space. And everywhere was just busy. Everywhere was rowdy, like a marketplace. So we gathered ourselves, myself, my husband and the kids in one place so that we can get our heads together. We just found ourselves in a fast-paced world. So we needed to gather ourselves together, coordinate ourselves and get things going. So before we left Nigeria, um, we, we activated um, something called Access Plus with Access Bank, where we got this exclusive access card. What that card does is it gives you access to lounges in different parts of the world. Remember, um, like I said, before we left just we wanted convenience. We wanted comfort because we were traveling with children. So we needed to make the trip enjoyable. So we went ahead and got that access exclusive card and we subscribed. So one of the airports where you can get exclusive access to lounge is uh, Doha Airport. So there, there was this Al Mahad lounge. You can use your access exclusive card to access that lounge. So we had to find our way. The place was is just too big. That airport is too big. So we found our way, climbed the escalator, went to the top, and then we were able to find the lounge. So we got access with our card into the lounge, beautiful lounge, like you can sleep because we had a layover there in Qatar, a layover of about seven hours or so. That's a long time. So we needed that lounge to relax, stretch out, sleep. If we wanted to bath too, we could take our bath there, but I wasn't ready to start bathing the children there and all that. So, but they were able to brush their teeth. The package we got from Qatar, there's toothbrush and toothpaste inside. So the children had the time to you know this or this is this is um the lounge a portion of the lounge we were eating our plantain the one we carried from nigeria and chicken and all that so there was free um beverage and all that in the lounge you could stretch out you could, could sleep and all that so it was basically fun we before you know it the seven hours wait time had passed in um doha airport and it was time to start moving towards the departure lounge for our move to Montreal, Canada. So we went to look for our own gate. Uh, thank God it wasn't too far from the lounge. So we got there. Everybody, the, as in seven hours after that airport was still very busy. Doha airport. Wow. So uh, our connecting flight again was still going to be Qatar Air. So we went to our departure lounge and we didn't wait for long. You know, at that point, even our hand luggage, we were asked to check it in. They want comfort. They don't want you carrying load and boarding with it. So they checked in our hand luggages. So basically what I had on me was the popcorn. We bought popcorn enough from Joss to keep the children entertained while we are flying. So it was the popcorn and one or two eating, eating things. When you are flying with children or traveling with children, you want to make sure they will have what to eat. Children are only concerned with what they'll eat, the cartoons they'll watch and sleep. So I wanted, we wanted to make sure they had all this. So we had some of those things. When it was time, we went ahead to board. Very organized people, very calm people. We went ahead to board. Again, Qatar Air gave us packages again. Each also had its own blanket. In fact, if you, if you are entering Qatar Air, and you will need to change to another Qatar Air. Don't carry all those blankets because they will give you another package. So they gave us the same package again. Blankets, socks, earplugs, eye shield, uh, headset, toothpaste, toothbrush. So uh, this time it took us... The flight from Doha to Montreal is... Um, that it took us 13 hours, 30 minutes to go from Doha to Montreal. It was quite a long trip, but 
one really didn't feel it because we took out that time to sleep it had been a bit stressful so we took out that time to sleep and thank god we did right so uh when we got to uh-huh i told you i'm a very picky eater so most of the food served in on on air i didn't eat basically i tried to test their they had basically three choices there's the rice rice something something with a sauce uh there was macaroni blah 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 <laughs> you know and the third one if, of course it's not me i just knew eating anything would be a problem for me i'm a picky eater i always love to tell people this so that they are not surprised when they give me something even burger i don't eat it right anything with cream i don't eat so uh mostly what i was taking all through the flight from abuja to montreal on that uh on board was mango juice i was enjoying i enjoyed the mango juice a lot so i knew i took mango juice i took tea i took water then i ate cake aside that all the food and they are trying guys they will serve you breakfast lunch dinner you know there was it's like food was always coming kata eh hey, well done your services are amazing so i my kids tried they ate some of those things but i couldn't eat my husband was busy drinking wine red wine there was red wine so anything anytime he takes anything he eats anything he'll ask them to give him wine so he was taking wine so overall it was a great experience flying with qatar air and they will always be um when i'm deciding on flights to be moving around with qatar air will still be on that list because guy guys those people are very good so we finally landed montreal we landed at night and as we were seeing the airport as the craft was going down the first sight of snow and my daughter gasped <gasps> like people who have been following me on facebook would december i usually talk about my daughter always saying she would love to see snow mommy when can i see snow when will i touch snow and all that so the first sight of real snow from air as we were thought going down the runway she was like <gasps> and i i i knew this was something this was like a dream for her and i am somebody who i love to see people achieve dreams right so she gasped i caught that moment and i i i felt it in my heart i was like whoa <laughs> so this is canada first sight of snow like you know so montreal airport was another experience totally now remember i said when we arrived abuja trolley was a problem for us to get trolley they were asking us to pay the moment we touched down montreal and we onboarded uh to the place where we go retrieve our luggages see trolley yapa everywhere trolleys everywhere like if you like carry 20 trolleys all they know is pack your luggage because this time you pack your luggage when we arrived to doha we didn't even see all the luggages we packed in but we had to pack our luggage in montreal because at that point we will be moving from qatar air we are changing our fr flight from qatar air to canada air so we had to take our luggages so there were a lot of trolleys i had to mention that just for you to see the difference so one thing i noticed was in montreal was most of the things they do there are do it yourself you get when we got to montreal the first thing we needed to do was that's our first point of entry into canada so we needed to get our papers stamped so that it would be on record that this was the day we came to um we, we this was the day we entered canada as permanent residents so when we got there we picked our things picked our trolley we were the ones that pushed it ourselves to the immigration unit we went to get our papers stamped we went to check in hmm. check in that normally you go to the staff at the over the counter and they'll do it for you uh -uh. we went to check in they were just showing us computers that go check yourself in when you do that you go and scan your things by yourself or more they are scan and agri collect our load so we had to now finally do our check-in over the counter so there, there's a space for family if your family you you have your children your partner with you there's a special place where you'll be checked in so that was where we went to 
uh, to get checked in. And guys, in Montreal, the moment we enter, anybody you meet and want to ask questions, they'll just start speaking French. <laughs> so, so what we started doing was anywhere we get to, before I talk to the person, I'll say English, please, English. If not, they'll start speaking French. And before you know, prrr, they've gone. Even when we enter the immigration office where they were going to stamp our papers, they had started speaking French. So we just said English, English. So um, it was overall a good experience. Montreal is also very beautiful. Uh, when we entered, <laughs> we were just playing around and all that. So we also had uh, a wait time of how many hours? Five hours thereabouts in Montreal before we take our connecting flight from there to our last point, which was Calgary. So finally, we boarded Air Canada uh, to Calgary, and it took us six hours to go from, is it six, five, six hours, I think, five or six hours to go from Montreal to Calgary. When we landed Calgary, damn, look at the beauty. Look at, see, see city of light. See the beautiful view from the air. You could feel the snow everywhere, the cold, everything. Like the air was just so beautiful, you know. So we retrieved our luggages at this point. We went also to get um, um trolley to get our luggages, packed everything in. And it was time to meet with family. We just took our time to 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 take in the beautiful sights in the airport the children at this point were now fully awake note our flight from montreal to calgary too we slept we needed that um we needed that nap time to get some energy so we landed canada and um we landed calgary and a beautiful family came to welcome us in the airport you can see me running to go meet my sister-in-law uh we've been talking over the phone for a long time um in fact it was an it, it was an emotional moment um connecting uh all the hugs all the kisses all the hey welcome to canada you know the cold <laughs> so finally we had to take our leave from the airport to the house god bless my in-laws beautiful family amazing people we they took us through town i was just looking at the whole site even though i was sleepy already again at that point but i was really enjoying the view and i kept telling myself whoa you are in canada you are not just in canada alone but with your family it had always been a dream it had always been a dream. Like, just enjoy this view. You know, I just had to take some of these uh, video shots, uh, videos, uh, video recordings. I, I had to take some of these video recordings as we were going to the house. Like, I was just trying to take in everything and to really tell myself that, yes, this is Canada. You are in Canada. You are in Canada. Enjoy. See you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a message. I would love to read from you. Ciao.